Hey guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plan. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that probably hits most, which is having ideas does not mean you're taking action. You have to have an idea and then take action. And so this topic is based off of basically majority of people from at least what I've seen. I don't know if you've seen the same Kirby. They look at these people who are rich and have created these huge businesses and think that just because they had a good idea to create that business, that that's how they got rich. So they just had a great idea and then everything else just fell in place. And that, and I've heard a lot where people say, I just need to think of one good idea. I had a good idea once someone stole my idea, they stole my invention, but they forget to realize or don't realize that you have to have the idea. That's the easy part. And then all the little steps that go in place, registering, you know, a patent for your invention, creating a business, a LLC, a corporation, raising funds, all there's all these different steps that are that have to go in place in order to create this idea or dream that you have. And Kirby's favorite quote is all the best ideas are in the graveyard. <laughs> so, Kirby, what do you uh, have you heard this? Have you heard people talk like this before? Um, all right, first, before I get to that, I got to tell you a story. It's crazy. Okay. Um, back in, back in 2000, I want to say 2008, 2008, and everybody y'all can look this up. So y'all don't think I'm crazy. Well, you probably still think I'm crazy, but anyway, that don't matter. All right. So 2008, I'm riding, I'm riding in the car with my wife and, and we just cr- cracking jokes or whatever. I said, I'm going to come up with an invention. Uh, and then I was like, and then she, so we just spitballing ideas back and forth to each other. And then, because me, well, as you know, I'm terrible with names, people's names and names of things. I know what it is, but I just can't, you know, the, the name of stuff just don't hit as fast with that thing. So I was like, I need to create an app. And just understand, I'm not computer literate. It was really something I wanted, but I, it wasn't out there. So I said, I'm going to create an app that you could take a picture of something and then it could tell you what it is. And then now you fast forward. Now there's apps that do it. I mean, I didn't know these apps existed until 2020, 2021 or something like that. So it might have been a little bit earlier, but that was all the way back in 2008, 2007, 2008. So just because I had an idea, I don't do nothing. If I don't go put that idea in motion, if I don't put the idea to paper, put that idea to diagram, put that idea to uh, get patents, patent pending, or something like that, a utilities pending, if I don't uh, start putting capital behind it to get that application invented, it don't mean nothing. I mean, it's a, you know, you said my favorite line is uh, the greatest events in the world are in the cemetery is because people think of a lot of stuff, but it don't go that easy. And everybody, and we'll just use the Jeff Bezos case. Everybody just think these people got rich because they only had an idea. Hell, we all have ideas. Every kid in every trailer park or ghetto in America got an idea. But they ain't a Fortune 500 company. It's more that goes into it than just that. It You have to put in more work than that. If you have an idea, then you need to start. I mean, you got Google. Y'all look up the newest Taylor Swift, Beyonce rap songs. Look up. How do you get an idea into fruition, into application? How do you raise capital for it? Because contrary to popular belief, Jeff Bezos, to get that big, he wasn't doing hand-to-hand door knocking. He wasn't setting up Kool-Aid stands on the corner. He wasn't going to the the flea market. To get something that big, you have to be able to articulate. You have to be able to demonstrate. You have to be able to talk to people that have bigger pockets than you have to invest in what you're doing. So 
you need to be taking speech classes or whatever to be able to do presentations and things of that nature. And the end all be all is to get people to invest in you or to get people to invest in your ideas. The idea can be great, but understand the people that invest in you, they care about the numbers. Everybody watch Shark Tank, right? You know, people come out and say, say all oh, this, this is what my product do, this is it does this, it does this. And then what come? Okay, tell us the numbers. Because the investor wants a return on investment. So if you don't know the numbers, the key part of it to get to where you want to be, you know, mega mansions, cars, and all this stuff. If you don't know the numbers of the business or the potential numbers, projected numbers, uh, you know, going out there, getting piloted numbers to make this happen, then there is nothing that an investor will want to do. I get people call me all the time. Hey, man, I want you just to invest 30000 in my business. And what? How much do I make? What's the ROI? How much revenue are you bringing in? What tax bracket are you in? How is your entity set up? I'm asking all the questions that matter. They have no clue. And then they have no clue. They don't know how to do it. And then they say, hey, why don't you, why don't you invest 35000 And I'm, I'm just telling you one story. Why don't you invest 35000 and then uh, when it get off the ground, when it get off the ground, this is their pitch. When it get off the ground, I'll just give you a $35,000 back. No, that sounds like a loan. It sounds like you need to go call a bank. It, it sounds like it need to be interest payments on that. But of course, if you make it sound like, oh, oh, he's an investor, once you lose my money, then you don't have to pay me back. No, that's not how it works. But I know I went on a little longer rant than I wanted to, Alex, my bad. But yeah, but that's how I look at it. Yeah, not to make this like a video on Shark Tank, but my favorite two on that is Mark Cuban and Kevin O'Leary because they just get straight to the numbers. I think the others, they, in some, I've seen them kind of like, Oh, that's a great idea. Oh, it's nice that it's family. Kevin O'Leary is just like, okay, that's great. So how much are you making? Like, <laughs> Just straight to the point, you know? And that's. But if you look at them, Kevin O'Leary and Mark Cuban, I think, are the highest net worth individuals on that show. And, right. you know, you have to be an asshole to, in order to get, you know, to that point. But it's it's absolutely true. I mean, you have to look at the numbers as an investor. That's the only thing that matters. Like it can be a great idea. It could be cool. It sounds fun and all that. But when you're raising capital, like the only person that actually cares about the dream or the idea of the business is the person that's creating it. No one else that's putting money into it gives a damn. Like it doesn't matter. All the, like the reason why they're giving you money is not to fund this like dream or vision it's to get money back it's to create an roi better than where they can find somewhere else that's the only reason that is that's it at all but this uh yeah i i, I thought of this one this this uh, this topic and i it's funny because i think if people realized that all it took was action and we can't emphasize action enough that they could see their dreams come true. But so many people, they love to talk, they love to fantasize, they love to imagine things. And it ne they never do, they never get anything done. And we talk about how if you're giving your job eight hours a day, you better be giving yourself eight hours a day. So many people, they go to a nine to five, they get home, they're exhausted, and then they don't want to do anything else. If you don't do anything else, you just get stuck in that trap where you're constantly waking up, going to your job, coming home, watching TV, eating dinner, going to bed and repeating. Like you're never, you're not advancing anything. You're just staying stuck at that job. And that's what the rat race is. But yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because I, I don't want, I don't, I don't want your point to be missed. When you said, if you're going to spend eight hours a day working for somebody else, you need to spend eight. I mean, this is for people that, that's really want to go out there and do it. Not the people that just want to pretend to do it. These are the people that, really want to go out there and do it. If you spend eight hours working for somebody else, when Alex is saying spend eight hours on yourself, that don't mean eight hours getting money and petties, uh, worried about your mental health, worried about 
uh, what new shows and making sure you stay up to date on the shows and make sure you're hugging your loved ones. Eight hours on yourself mean eight hours on your business ideas, eight hours on making your business work, eight hours on doing the things that need to be done to make it happen. Yeah, it's going to suck. It sucks. I mean, look at look at the people that are successful in business. They they don't have much time to do anything else. I mean, it's crazy all the time I hear people talking about, oh, I want to be, I want to be in real estate or I want to be in business. But when was the last time you looked at the MLS? How many times you look at the MLS? Oh, yeah, I looked at the MLS last week. Last week? It's every day. How many times have you submitted offers? How many times have you put in deals? If you want to, if you want to create a business, how much time do you spend on it? But it's funny that the same people that want to be entrepreneurs and want to create a business and want to start a business, they can tell me every score in the NFL, every score in the NBA, they can tell me all the new shows is coming on Netflix. Uh, they telling me about the the uh, what happened in Yellowstone last week, the uh, TV show. And I'm sitting here looking like, what the heck? I remember one guy, uh, he called me, this was a couple months ago. He called me he was like, hey man, I need I need help. Um, you know, I'm in a real estate buy. I need to bounce ideas off you. And we need, I gotta help me figure out what I need to do or if I just need to offload. And I said, okay. And then I asked him where he wanted to meet up for, you know, pseudo uh business dinner, you know, something quick. And then so he was like, let's meet up at the wing house. And then I'm just like, all right, I'm thinking Wing House, like Buffalo Wild Wings is loud. Not much going to get done there. But I let, because I, I wanted to see his motivation. So I just let it play out. I go to meet there. Actually, the place was uh, fairly quiet. It wasn't that many people there. And then I get there. And then I notice when we're talking, he's just staring at the TV. And then I happen to look back to see it. It's the Miami Heat. I want to say Miami Heat. In a playoff game, or in a yeah, in a playoff game, and the reason why he wanted to go to the wing house because he wanted to see the basketball game. So I'm sitting there talking, but I see he's distracted. And I said, I just looked at him and I said, I was like, look, you looking at people that's already made it, that's already have the money in their pocket. You over here struggling, but you worried about what they doing. You think if you fail that they gonna come look at you and come help you make money. And then he was like, he was like, but this is my team. And I said, well, I don't have time for teams. I got I got other stuff to do. And I got up and I walked out. That's what I was like, if you got time for this, I don't have time for it. So whatever happened to his business or whatever, that's that's on him. But I came, I showed up, and I tried to assist. Because a, a big thing, especially in my community, is, oh, the people that got it don't try to come help. But when they do come help, they miss the opportunity because it's something more important than that in this sport. And it's it's grandma's 18, 8, uh, 115th birthday party. You'd have been a, the other 100. Well, what's another one? You know what I mean? So people priorities mixed up when they want it, when they want really want it, when they say they really want it because they really don't want it. So that's that's the thing that's that's just amazing to me. And then they get mad at people like you, Alex, that go out there and make the sacrifices and get it done and then wonder, oh, well, Alex won't help me. Oh, Alex won't do this. Oh, Alex lucky. It's not luck. Nobody nobody pays attention to the grind. The only thing they just see is the position that you're in. They don't care. They don't want to look at what it took you to get there. They just think, magically, you woke up and then you just had some benefactor just put a whole bunch of money in your pocket to make it happen. And that's not the truth. With all that means, hey guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share this video and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.